LeBron James talked about the definition of MVP. Take a listen. I think it, sometimes the word most valuable or best player of the year, you can have different results. Um, you know, that's not taken away from anyone that's ever won an award, but I mean, you look at Steph's numbers. I mean, he averaged 30. I think he led the league uh, in steals. He was 90, 50, 40, and they won 73 wins. I mean, I don't. Can you have really any debate over that, really, um, when it comes to that award? But when you talk about most valuable, then you can have a different conversation. So, um, but take nothing away from him. He's definitely deserving of that award for sure. Stephen A., what do you read into what LeBron just said? Well, I think he has a point. Um, I'm not sure if it was wise for him to say that, particularly fresh off the storyline involving uh, his annoyance with questions about Kawhi Leonard. And now you come up with this at a time when Steph Curry just received the award. There are, there's no doubt that cynics are going to view him as engaging, you know, as drinking a little haterade when it comes to Steph Curry. I didn't absorb it that way. I just think that it's one of those situations where if you're LeBron James, you're looking at the level of talent that this guy is playing with as well. You're looking at the way a Draymond Green has played, the way a Klay Thompson is playing, the way the capabilities of a Harrison Barnes, et cetera, et cetera. And you're looking at a Golden State Warrior squad and you're saying, well, how good would they be without him? And then if you're LeBron, you're like, okay, look at how good teams are without me. Where would this team be without me? Where would Miami have been without me? Where would the previous Cleveland squad before I went to South, before I took my talents to South Beach have been before me? And then you think about it from that perspective, and that's, the, that's, that's, that's what he's bringing up. At the end of the day, LeBron James has to be in any discussion because he's the most complete player in the game. I don't think anybody can deny that. But, Skip, what I would say to LeBron and anybody else, uh, even though he did not question Steph Curry and what Steph Curry brings to the table, obviously, I would say this. <clears throat> And I've said this to my listeners on my, my Sirius XM Mad Dogs Sports Radio radio show. I said, what makes Steph Curry so special and why, even though LeBron is the more complete player, why you have to look at Steph Curry as being the best player in the world right now is because of the collateral impact of his presence. Yes, he averaged 30 on 50% shooting from the field, on 45% shooting from three-point range, on 90% shooting from the free throw line. No matter what you do, you can't stop this boy from shooting the basketball. This young man is special. But because he's so special, as a marksman, that ultimately affects you defensively. I'm talking about the Golden State Warriors. It makes you more impactful defensively because what happens is you have the opposing team who's suddenly tight because they know they can't afford to make any mistakes because if they do, they're going to pay a price once the ball gets in your hand. So suddenly, you have to monitor those turnovers. Suddenly, you have to rebound the basketball. You can't allow Golden State to get offensive rebounds. Suddenly, you know, passing the ball, distributing the basketball, not slowing the game down, quickening the pace, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things become pivotal because anything that you do wrong will assist in Golden State's offense. That makes you tight when you're on the offensive side of the ball, which makes Golden State's defense more formidable than you would imagine they should be, at least from time to time. I know their defense hasn't been quote-unquote great this year compared to what it was last year, but when it counts most, they're able to amp it up in pivotal moments and get things done because you're a bit tight because you view them as virtually unstoppable. And the main reason you view them as virtually unstoppable is because of the presence of Steph Curry on the offensive side of the ball. So LeBron will just D you up and have impact in regards to that. Steph Curry has a different kind of impact, but it's just as if not more lethal because of how explosive he is offensively. That's why he's more impactful this year than LeBron James, even though if you dissected their games, LeBron's the more complete player. This is how you have to look at it. And LeBron is looking at it that way and saying, that's why you have to draw a line and have a dichotomy that exists between the league MVP and the most valuable player to their team. 
even though others may not look at it that way. Yep. You brought this up as a possibility, and I'm going to run with it. I did not think this was a good look for LeBron James. I'm not saying he took the low road with these comments, but he didn't exactly stay on the high road that I expected him to stay on in embracing or accepting or validating Steph Curry's first ever unanimous MVP award and back to back. And then I, I sat back last night, Stephen A, and I tried to think, does LeBron have a point here? And to your point, I guess you can make a case. I, you, you look at the numbers. The Cavs without LeBron this year went one and five. And I've harked back to that one game. It was March 29th. Do you remember this one? I think it was a Sunday. James Harden and company were visiting Cleveland. Cleveland was up 20 in, early in the third quarter. That's just Kyrie and Love, no LeBron. And they couldn't hold the lead. James Harden went nuts in the fourth quarter. And Kyrie, and especially Kevin Love, did not go nuts in the fourth quarter. And they lost at home. And yet, then I look at what Steph just did right before your very eyes. In the last two games against Portland, plus 31 with Steph on the floor were, were the Golden State Warriors. In the two previous games without him, they were minus 20. So, <laughs> boy, it's a close call to say that LeBron is more valuable to his team than Steph is to his. Maybe you can make that case. And I do agree with one thing you said. I think LeBron is playing the highest level of basketball he's ever played. He's not the explosive scorer he quite used to be. But overall, all-around game, offense, defense, quarterbacking that offense, he's just he, he's playing at an extremely high, efficient level. And I keep saying this, there's still no better passer of the basketball, no better distributor than LeBron James. So that total package makes him extremely valuable to his team. I get that. You, you, he could make that case. But to, to in any way come across as diminishing Steph's award or even remotely questioning it or, or giving it grudging sort of acceptance where he, he rattled off the stats and kind of shrugged and said, yeah, what are you going to do? You know, like, well, I, I can't argue with those numbers. It, it's, it's not the greatest look for him right now. It may not be the greatest look for him, but I think I thought I said it earlier, but let me emphasize this as well. You know, he may not be questioning Steph Curry. He may be questioning the voters. And when you look at it, let's go to college basketball, Skip. Once upon a time, there was an MVP. Mm -hmm. And now you have the most outstanding player of the final four. Yep. And so, so what I'm saying is, is that they made that, they, they, they changed the acronym for it, per se, because saying the most valuable player sometimes didn't give or shine a light accurately on the person who was most deserving of that title, of that honor. And so they felt that they wanted to go to the most outstanding player. I'm saying to you that once you do something like that, well, why would you do it? Because you have people saying that you've got to draw a line in the sand. You've got to define what it is. And maybe LeBron is saying something along the lines of folks needing to define exactly what the MVP of the league is, who's the most valuable player. you got to remember, the Players' Tribune started last year. They went to Las Vegas. They honored. Steph Curry was the MVP. But who got the who got the MVP from the players with the Players Tribune Award? James not, not the Players Tribune, yeah, no, but it was James yeah. Harden. Yeah. So what I'm saying to you, well, why did that happen? You yeah. know, uh, clearly Steph Curry was the vote, but you had others who felt like, wait a minute, look at what James Harden yep. did for Houston when they were the number two seed last year. And so again, when when something like that goes on, it gives you some insight and some indication as to how players think they should be awarded and recognized for certain things that the media may, dare I say, drop the ball on from yep. time to time. Okay, I got you. Now, to finish this up, allow me to psychoanalyze, just my two cents worth of psychoanalyzing what LeBron said. Was okay. he not the chosen one coming out of high school? Was he not for years, I don't, we could argue how many years, but I don't know, eight or 10 years, was he not considered the best player on the planet? Okay. And all of a sudden, last year, Steph Curry came out of nowhere and debatably won the MVP over James Harden. Then in the finals, mm -hmm. Steph was not great in the first three games, started to look better and better as they pulled away from Cleveland, obviously, and won in, what was it, in six games? 
No, mm -hmm. yeah, six games. And my right. point to you is, Andre Iguodala was the MVP of last year's finals. So it wasn't Steph's world yet. And then maybe in a little bit of a surprise to LeBron, because it was certainly a shock to the rest of us, Steph Curry took it up a whole another level and ran away with MVP. And all of a sudden, for the first time in LeBron's life, 13 years into his NBA career at age 31, he is no longer regarded as the best player on the planet. Is that fair to say? I'm pretty sure that's widely that, acclaimed. That, that, that part is fair to say, but the flip side to it, Skip, is that LeBron James has won four league MVP honors. Yep, I got sandwich, it. Sandwiched between the four, Derrick Rose got the MVP mm -hmm. uh, in the league after LeBron had won two straight, and then LeBron, after he won the next two, Kevin Durant had gotten it. And so, again, you look at Derrick Rose, you look at a Kevin Durant, there were times where people were saying the same things about definitely Kevin Durant mm -hmm. and to a lesser, Maybe. definitely Kevin Durant, Maybe. to a yeah. lesser degree Der Derrick Rose. I think if you want to point to that and LeBron potentially having a problem with it, I think the fairest way to go about doing that is highlighting the love fest that appears to be mm. aimed in Steph Curry's direction. You got it. Because certainly it was never that for Kevin Durant until after he gave that beautiful speech yeah, and dedicating yep. everything to his mom. And it was certainly never that for Derrick Rose. That's the difference. The love affair, the agile, it's one thing to recognize Steph Curry as, as a great player and argue that he might be the best player in the world. But this love fest, I mean, if, 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 if Steph Curry passed gas right now, folks would call it perfume. I mean, it's ridiculous right now. You know, and, and maybe that's what the kind of things that would kind of turn some of his contemporaries who are the opposition off, yep. particularly if you're anticipating you're going to meet him in the finals. Yep. I but it makes you. it interesting. Okay, but my point is, because of everything you just said, this is the first real threat to the king's domain here, to his reign. Like, it, to me... There's, there's a little sadness in it because LeBron's feeling like he has to start defending himself to the media that votes for the award, trying to explain to them, re-educate them, wait, maybe there's another way to define this because he feels the crown slipping well, away. And here's, where I, here's what I think you're missing. You're right with what you just said, but you're not understanding that it's a beautiful, beautiful thing for us to celebrate. I'm talking about all of us, the media, basketball fans, etc. You know why? Because if LeBron feels a speck of what you just said, yeah, I agree. Then guess what, you, Skip? You, you There's a fight. finals coming up, and by, for all intents and purposes, <laughs> Cleveland is expected to okay. be there. Uh, and if Golden State is there, okay. that's Steph Curry waiting, and that's a collision course that all I'm of us you. should be looking for. So I don't, it doesn't bother me. It okay. doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't bother me, but I would warn LeBron if in any way this comes across to Steph Curry as you are di diminishing his achievement here, you don't want to put that chip on that kid's shoulder either because he is a force of nature. When, when hold they're, they're going to come hold in hold with, hold with, hold with. Hold on, hold, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's LeBron, LeBron supposed to be scared? I mean, this is what it's all about. Better I be. mean, listen, like I told you, everybody, everybody, they're not you, Skip. You know, when it comes to your Spurs, if Kevin Durant got kidnapped, you'd smile at night. You know, if he got the <laughs> flu, you'd be happy. You know, if he tripped over his own ankle and sprained it and couldn't yeah, play, my you know, guys you'd be happy. So much. You, you, hold yeah. on, you've been, no, even if they were healthy, so you'd want guys. it that way. Yeah. Hold on. The injury hold gods on. don't like even, me. Hold on. Yeah. Even if it was, even if the San Antonio Spurs were young, healthy, and sprained, Mm -hmm. You'd still want something to happen to Russ, Russell Westbrook or Kevin Durant. LeBron, us, anybody, to be the man, you got to beat the man. Steph right, Curry's well, the man. Well, He's the champion. He's a two-time right, league MVP. LeBron you. should but, want but, this. But between, he should want this. Between the lines, I think LeBron just called out Steph Curry. That's what just happened. And that's fine with me. It's good for I, us. Listen, good listen, for listen, us. listen. Bring it listen, on. I don't think... I don't think that's what he did, but here's the deal. I wouldn't mind the fact that if Steph Curry took it that way and was ready because of it, because that's just going to make the finals that much better, assuming they get there. Yeah. This is what I'm talking well, about. Well, this, trust this, me is on this. Yeah, you, this is what you want. This is what you want. You can just call up LeBron's people and remind them that Andre Iguodala will not be the MVP of this coming finals. If there's a rematch, it will not be Iguodala who will be MVP.
Okay. You know, who knows? It might be LeBron. Mm. Why you might oh, not want to sleep, Skip. Oh, you, you might not want to sleep, Skip. Hey, now. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. just saying, it might not. Right. Listen, I have no doubt that Steph is going to do his thing, yeah. but you act like LeBron is chopped liver. I I'm don't. sorry. One of the top two players in the world for the yeah. last 10 years. Yeah. And, uh, I and, mean, like, well, you, act like he, you act like he's chopped liver. Yeah, for once, he has a lot of help. If my eyes don't That's deceive right. for me. For once. Yeah. For once. Okay. All right. So, All so right. now Here we go. So, so you're willing to admit yeah. he didn't have the help before. I did before. not admit that. All right. I was let's kidding you on. about it. Let, let, let's get it on. Yeah. Let's right. get it let's on. Do, let's let's just cancel tonight. We don't need tonight. Let's just get the finals on right now. We can't hey. wait. Come on now. Congrats to Curry on his second MVP. And of course, LeBron has four received votes in all of his 13th 